Some shocking numbers from the World Health Organization. Approximately two-thirds of all people under the age of 50 are estimated to be infected with a form of the herpes virus. For more, we're joined by infectious disease expert Neil Rao. And we're talking into the billions here. Yes. Why are these numbers so high? Well, of course, the numbers are high, but not everybody who's infected actually has symptoms. Actually, only 1 in 12 people who have herpes know that they actually have it. So there's a huge ocean of people who are carriers of the virus. And they have no idea. And they have no idea. And that most of these people we're talking about have type 1 herpes, which causes cold sores. And about 20% of the population actually have genital herpes. Okay, and so and even those people don't, don't necessarily have, um, have symptoms. It's only a small percent of people who get the actual outbreaks. And we're dealing with people under the age of 50. Correct. So why is that? Well, that's the population that was studied in this World Health Organization report. Um, also, we know that when people are very young, they get type 1 herpes because of oral secretions being shared. Think about daycares and right. poor hygiene. Right. It's gotten better over the years in developed countries in terms of the rates of people getting it when they're very, very young. But what they did notice in the study is that type 1 herpes seems to increase in our part of the world because of changes in sexual practices where there is more sexual transmission of the herpes virus that's found on the mouth. Okay, yeah, tell us more about that because type 1 herpes yes. can lead to genital herpes in some cases. Correct, so most of genital herpes is due to type 2. Type 2 herpes is the type that recurs very frequently. Type 1 herpes typically causes cold sores but because people are now having a sexual uh, practice change as they get older and are practicing oral sex more than they used to. So think Bill Clinton, we'll say a little no more than that for a breakfast show. Um, we are now seeing more type 1 herpes causing genital herpes. The concern with that is that type 1 herpes, if you have a pregnant mom with type 1 herpes, it's more likely to be transmitted to a newborn during the birthing process. I do want to point out it's still a very rare event to see uh, a newborn with herpes being acquired from a mom, but this is the concern with this report, that we might see more newborn herpes because there's more type 1 herpes causing genital herpes. A pregnant mom unwittingly passes it to the baby. And the fact is, once you have herpes, you have herpes for life. Herpes is with you forever. So that's why there are so many people who are infected. But when we say infected, it doesn't mean they actually have symptoms. It's a, it's a type of virus which once you get it, you don't actually clear it. It goes into a dormant state. Most people have no symptoms. Some of them reactivate once in a blue moon. Some people don't reactivate, but they shed the virus from time to time, and that's how they pass it to a new partner. Treatment options? Treatment options, if you have really bad outbreaks, there are antiviral medications. They haven't changed over the past 20 years. Uh, some people who have really frequent outbreaks that I see in my practice, especially genital herpes, we give them a treatment to take continuously, and it's quite safe to take those drugs continuously, and it can actually prevent transmission to a partner who doesn't have herpes. But most people don't need treatment because they just have an absence of symptoms or occasional shedding of the virus, and it causes no serious consequence. Do you recommend that people get tested? It's a blood test, right? Yes. It's worth getting a blood test if you have a partner who has genital herpes and you don't know if you've had it as well. Because as I said, many people have had it and they don't realize it. So when we have so-called discordant couples where one has it and one doesn't, then a blood test is helpful. There was an interest in vaccines to try and prevent transmission. Unfortunately, the current vaccines we have don't work very well and so we haven't actually seen those come into real use. But there's a lot of interest in vaccines, perhaps for maybe 20 years from now we'll be talking about vaccines. Dr. Neil Rao, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.